What's up guys, it's Dull Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to frightening but 100% true gun facts from Babylon B. So you know that it's most likely not going to be true gun facts, it's probably going to be taking the piss on a bunch of liberal beliefs about gun facts, maybe exaggerating them, honestly you don't even need to exaggerate them, you can just literally quote them and it sounds fucking insane half the time and hilarious. Uh, but yeah, link to the original video down below as always, remember to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm and uh, let's go. Humanity lived in peace without any murders or violence. <laughs> and then firearms were invented. And then, a notorious business and then the Fire Nation arrived. Partners Bill Weapon and Cornelius Gunn. <laughs> Person kind was instantly plunged into a horrifying hell. Person kind death and destruction. And it's all thanks to guns. Here are some facts about these deadly weapons of mass destruction that you might not know. This is a deadly scoped semi-auto revolver with an extended mag clip. <laughs> Semi-automatic revolver with an extended mag clip. A scoped. So, no scope. Um, there's no mag clip at all. <laughs> I love it. It's about how accurate lefties get when they identify guns. I'm not even like a gun expert by any stretch of the imagination, but like, I know enough that when I watch those videos, it makes me laugh. A gun just like this one was used to kill Abraham Lincoln. If <laughs> guns hadn't been invented, Lincoln would still be alive today. This is a nine millimeter handgun, though I measured it and it's actually much bigger than that. <laughs> powerful fully semi-automatic clip loading assault firearms on the planet <laughs> fully automatic assault firearm the fucking pistol let's take this to the range and see what it does to a human being a nine millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body as you can see his lung was blown right out of his body <laughs> and he's a dummy he didn't even have lung terrifying this is the most fearsome weapon of all the AR-15, which stands for assault rifle with a power level of 15. It's so assault rifle 14. <laughs> it's got a power level 15. That's not very powerful. It's got to be at least over 9,000. Should have fit an over 9,000 joke in here. So heavy you can barely lift it. Help me! Help me! Help me! <laughs> Ten boxes that you might be moving. It is as heavy as. Ten boxes that you might be moving. <laughs> what is that quote from? <laughs> Somebody let me know what that quote is from down there. That is fucking hilarious. Is that an actual quote that somebody said about guns? Or is that about something else? That is fucking funny. This is the shoulder thing that goes up. The shoulder Scary. thing. This is the trigger which decides whom to murder. The murder button. input whatsoever. This is the antenna which receives orders from Nazi Germany. <laughs> this is a rail which can be used for all sorts of deadly attachments, from a chainsaw bayonet and a Bible attachment to a... Man, a chainsaw bayonet? That actually sounds pretty badass. It's like some fucking, uh... They had that in... What was it? Was it Unreal Tournament had that back in the day? The chainsaw gun? Man... Somebody, I bet you somebody has made a real weapon like that, honestly. I gotta Google that after. A MAGA hat launcher. A MAGA hat this launcher. Is the 50 Guys, see round Buddy's hand. Commonly used in AR 15s. Let's go ahead and load it in through the 30 clip magazine. 30 magazine clip. <laughs> now this gun is ready to blow the head right off of a target, decapitating them instantly. Let's see this weapon of war in action. Trigger warning. This is really scary. <laughs> and finally, this is the Fortnite GL Blaster. It fires. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fucking Fortnite Nerf gun. That is beautiful. The GL Blaster. Oh my god, that's amazing. A Fortnite fucking Nerf grenade gun. Deadly rocket grenades that punk 12 year olds use to blow up your pathetic force structures. And then they say horrible things about your mother and floss over your dead body. <laughs>
These WMDs are just horrible. But one thing that these facts can't tell you about is the human cost. Firing these guns, even for this brief demonstration, has given me a severe case of post-traumatic stress disorder from which I may never recover. The deafening- Man, I remember, there was a famous video that came out, it's gotta be like two or three years ago now at least, but there was some leftist reporter who actually went to a gun range and then tried, it was a dude too, tried claiming he had fucking PTSD after he was using the guns there. It was the fun, like most unintentionally funny shit I'd ever seen. The roar of a .22 mm echoes in my nightmares. I can't watch a Matthew McConaughey movie where he pulls a gun out without collapsing into a puddle on the floor. <laughs> I'm constantly fearful that Alec Baldwin may be in the room with me at any moment, ready to sh- Legit fear. That's a legit fear. To see Alec Baldwin the other day, he actually posted a picture on the one year anniversary of him suit shooting that chick. Like something like, I can't believe it's been one year or something like that. Like, bro. Uh. Shoot me. Friends don't let friends buy magic white man fire sticks. <laughs> of war, but also, they are useless against tyrannical rulers anyway. So give up your guns to the government. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that is, oh. That is such a good line right there. Right? They're the, they're the most destructive war weapons ever made, and also they're completely useless, right? They'll, they'll argue the exact opposite thing depending on the point they're trying to make. Right? It's, it's like, okay. One, the gun doesn't kill people. People with guns kill people. Two, murderers aren't worried about gun laws anyway, right? They're, they're already willing to murder. They're not worried about the, whether it's fucking legal to do or not. And, and three, this idea that, like, you can't resist a tyrannical government if they outmatch you in technology is absolutely ridiculous. We've seen this many times throughout history. Right? Lots of countries have lost wars because of, you know, fighting guerrilla warfare against against either invading governments or their own tyrannical government when they were vastly outgunned not to mention the fact that like something something like 80 i think it's like 80 to 85 percent of the military votes republican and then there's like another five to ten percent that votes libertarian so if you add it all up it's like 85 to 90 plus percent of the military votes for one of the right-wing parties so like e even if there ever was like some you know civil war that would go on most likely, the people that own all the guns would be on the same side as the military, right? Or, like, the military would defect to that side if it was the government trying to crack down on people. I mean, if people are like, oh, this would never happen. We saw it in the first Civil War, right? In the first Civil War, a bunch of Southerners left their posts to go fight for the South, right? One of the best generals on the Southern side was asked to be a general for the North, said no, went to the South, and fought as one of their generals. I mean, people, when, you know, if, if the U.S. ever falls into a civil war again, most of the, you know, most of the, like, gun advocates, like the, the people who are pro-gun, are going to be on the same side as the military. Or, or I should say, they're going to be on the same side as the people who are currently in the military, whether or not the military is actually on their side. Because a lot of those people are just going to abandon the military. Government, so they can supply them to Ukraine. Or the Taliban. <laughs> yeah. Hey you! Are you enjoying this video? That's such a good video. I love it. But yeah, like as I was kind of saying that at the end, like I think I, fi I find this idea of like if there was a civil war, you'd never be able to resist the military anyway, like kind of hilarious. Um, because it's like most people saying that they're lefties, right? So let's assume we had a left wing tyrannical government, right? So you have right-wingers resisting, okay? So right-wingers have all the weapons, or the, the vast majority of the weapons that are owned by private citizens, right? I don't know the exact number, but I imagine it's 90% plus of the weapons owned by private citizens are owned by right-wingers, right? I would imagine so. On top of that, the military is like 85 to 90% Republican and or, or Republican or Libertarian, right? And we've seen, you know, with previous examples of, you know, the the, fir the, the, the first Civil War, the American Civil War, um, when the country goes to a state of Civil War, people will leave to go fight with the side that they think they should fight with, right? So obviously back then you had, like, all the Northerners stayed in the North and most of the Southerners went to the South, including General Lee, right? General Lee was asked to be a general for the North, said no, and went and fought for the South. 
One of the best generals in the whole war. Right. Now, obviously, back then, the majority of the population was in the Northeast, right? Um, and the majority of the military, therefore, was from the Northeast. Nowadays, I mean, the majority of the population, it's spread, spread out all over the country. You have, like, large population centers in Florida, Texas, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, right? Like, the population's a lot more spread out, although it is still largely on the East Coast. Um, but if you look at, like, who the military pulls their troops from, they're overwhelmingly from the South and from other rural areas, Right? Like the South is disproportionately represented in the military. Rural areas are disproportionately, you know, represented in the military. Right? And on top of that, you know, if we assume that, you know, basically the same thing happens that happened in the first Civil War, and, you know, people defect to, to fight on the side that they agree with, you would have something like a 90% defection rate or near 90% defection rate in the military to fight with the guerrilla slash resistance movement. Right. But anyway, I, I think that, that was a great video. I, I love the cost of jokes. That one girl, though, about the boxes, what is that from? I have not seen that before. Somebody let me know down below. Um, let me know where the box girl is from because I've never seen that. I don't know the context behind that. But, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.